everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our press conference, which is being put on by Climate Action Network Canada. So we're back here in the new year 2010 on the heels of Copenhagen. And 2010 is obviously a big year for Canada, which will include hosting the G8 and the G20 in June. Um, and we also hope, obviously, that this year will be a, a turning point in the government's climate change position. One of the outcomes of the recent Copenhagen Climate Summit was, of course, the contentious Copenhagen Accord. And its first deadline that it cites is the 31st of January, at which countries that agree to the Accord will be required to make a submission or a pledge of their targets. So we have taken this opportunity to make a people submission to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, which we believe more accurately represents what Canadians want to see our government doing with respect to climate change. So I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues, John Bennett from the Sierra Club Canada, who's the Executive Director, and Dale Marshall, who's a climate change policy analyst from the David Suzuki Foundation. And my name is Hannah McKinnon from Climate Action Network Canada. Canadians want the, want the world to know that we want to have more action on climate change. And we, we want the United Nations as the body in the world that understands the need for climate change the most that has been gathering this information for the last 20 years is the place for Canadians to make that submission. Uh, we are fully aware that our, the present government has no intention of doing anything to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in Canada despite whatever it might submit to the, to the United Nations in the next few days. So we've written to Ivo de Boer, the Secretary of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, and asked him to accept the Canadian people's submission on climate change. We've done this uh, because this government doesn't represent what Canadians, Canadians' views on climate change are. Um, and we base, that, uh, base this, this, this contention on a number of things. Uh, the first is that over 150,000 Canadians signed the Kyoto Plus petition and over 150 organizations uh, signed on to that to the Kyoto Plus petition, demanding that this government set real scientific targets for climate change emissions reductions, um, which have been ignored. Um, all the polls uh, have, have continually shown that Canadians, the vast majority of Canadians, support action on climate change, unlike the, way, the actions of our government. We also see that the polls tell us that Canadians still, can, even though we've gone through a recession, one of the worst we've ever seen, Canadians still consider climate change on a par with the economic woes of Canada. This is an important issue to Canadians. And we've also seen some changes in the way this government is work, that this government is operating or what it's saying, uh, which really make us concerned. Um, we're, we're hearing new, to new talk about synchronizing our position with the United States, uh, coming from the same party and the same government that only a few years ago said it wanted a made in Canada plan. Uh, clearly these are just a continued list of excuses. So we have written to Mr. DeVoe and we supplied a submission, and I'm going to ask my colleague Dale Marshall from the Sioka Suzuki Foundation to explain the details of our submission. So, I'm Dale Marshall with the David Suzuki Foundation. Um, our submission essentially encompasses four parts. One is um, that Canada take on uh, a science-based target. The Copenhagen Accord acknowledges that two degrees is uh, a, a limit upon which, uh, above which um, dangerous climate change ensues. Um, we think actually that the limit should be lower than that, but even adhering to the two degree limit for Canada uh, means that Canada needs to take on a, a target of at least 25% reductions below 1990 uh, by 2020, um, way out in front of the 3% target that Canada has on the table and will probably be submitting under the Copenhagen Accord. Um, in addition, we, uh, Canada needs to do its fair share with respect to financing action uh, in developing countries um, to adapt to the climate changes that are happening already and also to curb uh, their own emissions. So the fast-track financing that was um, identified in the Copenhagen Accord uh, was $30 billion over the course of the next three years. Uh, based on Canada's wealth and our, and our contribution to greenhouse gases that are the, the pollution <coughs> in the atmosphere already, 
um, can needs to be contributing three to four percent of that total. And so that means essentially $350 million um, per year over the next three years. So we want to see in the next budget on March 3rd um, a commitment to, uh, to deliver that financing, $350 million to developing countries, um, as well as for the next two years as well. Long-term financing, uh, in the Copenhagen Accord, it was, it was uh, identified as, as up to $100 billion per year um, uh, between 2013 and 2020. And again, um, that total is, is insufficient. Um, the estimates that we have from Climate Action Network International show that it's at least twice as much as that. And uh, Canada needs, again, to be contributing 3 to 4% of that total. And fourthly, um, Canada needs to recommit to the UN process and the Kyoto Protocol. Um, progress can be made under the Copenhagen Accord, but it needs to be formalized under um, the UN framework because it's the most transparent, uh, the most accountable, and the most democratic body for, for doing that. Um, much like the G8 and G20, there's progress that can be made there. Um, and we, and we very much expect and hope that there's climate is high on the agenda of the, the G8 and G20 meetings that are happening in Canada in June. Uh, and again, that progress can be brought into the UN um, and formalized in a way that encompasses all, um, all countries in the world, the entire global community. Um, let me uh, say a few words in French. Je vais répéter un peu en français. Premièrement, aujourd'hui, on va soumettre à l'ONU, à Yvonne de Bar, le secrétaire du, du Convention 4 sur les changements climatiques à l'ONU, um, une soumission par la part des Canadiens et Canadiennes qui veulent que le Canada va, va beaucoup plus loin, uh, qui a beaucoup plus d'ambition uh, par rapport à um, uh, l'action qu'on va prendre sur les changements climatiques. C'est clair que le Parlement uh, veut qu'on va plus loin. Une résolution qui s'est passée um, au mois de novembre démontre que uh, un objectif qui est beaucoup plus contraignant de, de 25 de réduction sous euh, le niveau de 1990 par 2020 est nécessaire. Euh, les, euh, la, la majorité des provinces, euh, qui constituent plus de 80 du, du peuple canadien, euh, veut, veulent aussi qu que le Canada va plus loin, qui ont des cibles qui sont, qui sont plus ambitieuses. Euh, et le peuple canadien, avec des sondages et, euh, euh, et des pétitions, c'est clair que les Canadiens et Canadiennes veulent aussi que... <coughs> Le gouvernement du Canada va, va plus loin. En termes du content de, 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 de cette soumission à l'ONU, euh, il faut premièrement un objectif qui est plus contraignant, de 25 euh, qui est en, en ligne avec la résolution qui a, qui a été passée par, la, par le Parlement, qui est en ligne avec qu ce que la science démontre qui est nécessaire par la part du Canada. Il faut aussi que le Canada contribue du financement euh, à court terme de 30 milliards euh, Euh, d'ici 2012, euh, la contribution du Canada, c'est de 350 millions de dollars par année. Alors, dans le, le budget qui va se passer au 3 mars, on veut voir cette contribution dans ce budget-là et pour les deux prochaines années aussi. Et à long terme, euh, euh, qu'est-ce qu que les pays en voie de développement ont besoin, c'est de, de 200 milliards par année pour s'adapter aux changements climatiques et pour euh, s'adresser à leur, euh, leurs émissions de, de gaz à effet de serre. Um, et finalement, on veut que le Canada se euh, recommette au, euh, process, au processus qui se passe sous l'ONU euh, et euh, du protocole de Kyoto. C'est clair que le progrès, on peut voir du progrès dans le, sous l'accord de Copenhague, mais tout ça, il faut, faut, faut que ça soit formalisé dans un um, dans un forum qui est beaucoup plus transparent, beaucoup plus démocratique, et ça, c'est uh, les Nations Unies. Um, la même chose pour, um, pour l'agenda du, du G8 et du G20. Um, on peut voir du progrès, là, sur, le, sur les changements climatiques. On veut, on veut que ça soit sur l'agenda um, et une, une priorité pour le Canada, qui est, qui est pays hôte. Um, mais en même temps, on veut que ce progrès-là soit... Um, formalisé dans euh, le processus de l'ONU. Alors, je vais, je vais finaliser cela et on est prêt à prendre des questions.
Question, any questions?